I gotta have something that I'm passionate about to make the kids mad enough to hate watch my videos. I, I just didn't think this was the thing specifically. I didn't either. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. It just really irritates me, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't say. Motherfucker. My top five pop punk bands goes as such. I believe you had this band somewhere on yours as well. Yeah. My number five is Less Than Jake. I almost didn't put them on here, but damn, man, they got more pop punk riffs than they do ska riffs. Like, I, I would consider Less Than Jake damn near more pop punk than ska punk almost, you know? Not not really. I'm, I'm saying that in jest. I, 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 they're, that's, they're, why I, that's why I put them first in my head. I have them as a pop punk band, then a ska punk band. Oh, really? No, yeah. they, in my opinion, they're... They're absolutely a ska punk band. Like that's that's what they are. Um, but they have so much pop punk, like sprinkled on top and dressed around the side. And you know they got they're sitting on top of a pop punk cake tray. You know they're 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 a freaking pop punk band with the center of it being ska punk. I don't know how to say what I'm thinking, but mm -hmm. like I think they're equal parts both. You can consider them both. I don't think they're first. I, that's not true. If they, if I had to say they're first, I think it would definitely be a ska punk band because pop punk bands don't have horns in them. So just based solely on that, they're a ska punk band first. But if you took the horns out of their songs, their songs would still work. Like mm -hmm. you don't even really have to replace them with anything. You could, you could put another guitar in there, another lead or something, or put a keyboard in there somewhere, and it would be fine. But if you remove the horns from their songs. I don't think that it would take a lot from them. And I hate to say that and make the people that play those, you know, parts of their songs feel bad. I don't mean to do that. I just mean like it, it, the song would still structurally be good. They could, they could just add something else to it. So yeah, listen, Jake, really great band. I love that band. Number four, oddly enough on your list as well. Number four is your number five MXPX. Because when I think pop punk bands, the first band I think of is MXPX. That's not that they're the best. They're not. They're not the most famous. They're just the band I go. Oh yeah, pop punk, MSPX. Like they're the first true pop punk band I ever listened to. Um, and their last album was so damn good. I can't get over the fact that they're this age making making these kind of records. It's kind of like how I felt with Rancid. It, it's just so crazy, man. Uh, number three will probably be the most um, controversial pick, but I will fight anybody about this, dude. Now my number three is Masked Intruder. There's a reason why I was so excited to see Blue Intruder on that tour in Las Vegas. It is because I was a fan of that band way before I knew I was going to see that dude on a tour of the Punk Rock Museum. I love that band. I've got all of their stuff on vinyl. I sell it in my stores. I love their music. But they are technically a power pop band. But whatever. They're still a pop punk band because they sound like the Ramones, basically. If, you're, if the Ramones wrote a bunch of songs about robbing you and and being creepy outside your window, then they would be Mass Intruder. To be fair, they have several songs about Robbie Newman being creepy, so they do probably, have yeah, yes, like yes, okay, yes, yes. <laughs> but my, my point is, is that they are so high on my list because they deserve that spot. Mm. I almost put the Ramones there, but I just don't listen to the Ramones enough. I like the Ramones. I think that they're a more important and influential band, but I don't like them as much. I don't listen to them as much. So that's ultimately why Mass Intruder got on this list. My number two is... Blink-182. I think people were probably expecting me to say them for number one. They just simply are not. The only reason that they even made this list is because of Dude Ranch and Enema of the State. I think that those albums affected my life so much that it's one of these things where I can't... I don't have the right to replace that. I can't put them somewhere else. They have to be on my top five because I listen to those two records probably as much as I have any other record that I own that includes rancid. Like, cause there was a time where that's all that I listened to was blink. Cause that's all I was doing was skateboarding and hang out with my friends. And that was the only music that I could put on that they would also like. Mm -hmm. And so I just listened to it till it was like, I couldn't stand it anymore. There was probably five years where I wouldn't touch a blink album. I wasn't listening to it. I didn't want to hear it. If it came on, I just turned it off. But Dude Ranch is a perfect album, and Enema of the State is a very, very, very near perfect album. I would almost say they're both perfect. I think I just think they're both perfect, but I like Dude Ranch better. 
They've got one of the most important drummers in the history of music. He's also a very important producer at this point. While I don't care for MGK, he, Travis Barker brought MGK along and helped him secure a spot in this conversation. Uh, he helped create another gateway artist that's going to bring in just swarms of kids into this genre and punk rock and skate punk and hardcore and ska and reggae ultimately and metal ultimately. Like it's going to bring so many kids into so many things that I, I, the fact that I hate him is almost hilarious. Like it's just so stupid. But uh, it is what it is. But the well, most imp- the really what? quickly though, like that thing I went to last week doesn't exist without Travis Barker. Like oh, this whole sure. this whole thing of like adults can travel across the world and pay way too much money to watch pop punk would not exist as a concept if Travis Barker basically when Blink is on hiatus being like, hey, let's make music with you and you and you. Let me lend my credibility to you and you and you. And hey, there's still a groundswell for this, and so everyone's gonna do this again because it, it's a proof of concept. You want to hear something funny this. though? Is that is exactly what punk rockers will say makes them not a punk band is that kind of stuff because that's not what is in the threads of punk i get a lot of people on my channel that are like dude talk about punk rock don't talk about pop punk and i'm like well first off i'm talking about whatever i want sorry it's my channel um but like i just don't understand the hate but like i I guess i get it because there's a certain group of like like crusty kids don't care about blank they hate that band but Mm. i also don't hear a lot of them talk crap about them there's a certain like Sorry, I'm twitching a lot tonight, dude. My ADHD is completely taking over my whole body, dude. I can't quit moving around. I'm so sorry. Um, but Blink-182, they, they, they have remained relevant for so much longer than they should have. Like, it's kind of crazy. This week, they might be the biggest band in the world for one week. Like, seriously, they might be the biggest, oh, they might band, be the biggest band in the world again, period. For like, But like this month, yeah. And it's, and it's legit. It's 2023. And like, wow. Like, that's insane. Yeah, man. That, I mean, the thing is, is that they went through all this stuff and they have these records that we would call somewhere between five and 7.5 out of 10. They're all mm-hmm. like average or better, but not great. And then they drop one this year that while I still think is like an eight out of 10, some people are going to call it a nine. And I can't really say that they're that wrong because eight and nine aren't that far apart. So um, it's just kind of wild to me that they have done what they've done. I just think it's crazy. I think that they are owed a lot of respect, even when you don't want to give it to them. It is what it is. It's one of those things, man. For guys like us who have been with them for so long, you know what I mean? Like remembering them from the nineties and to see like, even where they're at now, like they're, they're an establishment band and, and again, talk about an unpunk thing, but in like, in the best kind of way, they are very much like the, the, there's a pop punk establishment now. And I think that's what this last month has been sort of establishing. Like that's what, that's what those guys, that's where they exist now. Well, the number one band is the one band that did Blink-182 better than Blink-182 did Blink-182. Who do you think I'm talking about, sir? Uh, Who would be my favorite pop punk band? Well, I thought it was going to be One Man Army, but you had them as your honorable mention. So, Yeah, I just, they're just too punk rock for that, dude. They're, they're just too gritty. Uh, Alkaline Trio, sir. Oh, okay. Hey, sorry. Future me here. I just want to give you a heads up. I go on a little bit of a tangent here. Got in my feels about Alkaline Trio. They're like one of my favorite bands. <laughs> Admittedly, it's a little funny, but I wanted to prepare you. I am fully aware of how ridiculous I sound going off this long about Alkaline Trio and Blink-182, two bands that I very much love. And let me be very clear about that. I love me some Blink-182. So <laughs> if you're like a super fan or something, or if you're sensitive to, to stuff like I don't know, just beware of what you're fixing to watch all right all right back to the podcast alkaline trio is my number one and that is because without alkaline trio we wouldn't have the blink 182 that we have if you like it or you don't like it i don't care uh it has been proven they have said it themselves they were inspired by alkaline trio to write better music alkaline trio um an amazing band matt writes some of the best lyrics i've ever heard in my life and uh he is a total poet they're a a great band they write great songs but they're one of those bands on the warp tour that uh it's a little strange to watch alkaline trio play during the day you know absolutely like they're they're like a band you want to watch it like midnight or two in the morning and and it has uh, to be halloween yeah yeah yeah. actually when we heard alkaline trio for the first time on our last record i rewrote like three songs because his words were so good it inspired me to go back and rethink what i was writing about and how i was writing about it alkaline trio i think is like uh 
It's like a Paul Westenberg of yeah. Yeah. Like our generation. Yeah, completely. He totally is. That's a perfect example. Which gave us things like the self-titled album, which while I don't necessarily like it, it is revered and is considered an outright classic album, right? Mm -hmm. Like, am I wrong there? That album's considered no. That's, like, what, that's what I meant. It's like it's a masterpiece album, even if I don't care for it. Yes, right. So like they we they wouldn't have that record if it wasn't for Alkaline Trio. Mm -hmm. Do your research before you get pissed off at me, people. Like they have said it, and it's not a bad thing. Like I don't I don't understand why people think it's a bad thing. But not only did Alkaline Trio not break up, okay, their lead singer. Reeled in Blink One Eight Two, ended their career. <laughs> threw them a freaking life raft and pulled them back in, and then got no kind of thank you for it. I don't want to hear about that. They wrote him a letter online. They were probably told to do that, or they probably felt guilty and did that. They weren't gonna do that. I don't want to hear it. Like I love Blink One Eight Two. They're next in line. Okay, they're my number two. But don't tell me that they were so kind to Matt Skiba. They did that man dirty, bro. I, I will die on that hill, bro. Like, it pisses me off. But, like, my basis for my, 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 the reason I put them as my number one isn't so that I can rant and rave about it. It's because I was going to put Blink as my number one. And then I was like, but I, I can't, dude. Like, Alkal I listen to Alkaline Trio more. I just mm -hmm. do. And if I go by number of songs that the, each band's got and then number of songs that I like enough to put on a playlist, alkaline trio has a higher percentage that's basically how i got here was math i just was like what is the actual answer to this question the actual answer would be alkaline trio and it's not trying to be disrespectful it's just because mathematically they're the band that i listen to the most has the more higher percentage of songs that i really love uh me i'm just being cheeky with all this shit talking i do love the band i love blink 182 uh, but i do believe that that blink wouldn't be blink without alkaline trio and they wouldn't exist without matt skiba right now i think that i think that matt skiba kept them going long enough for them to have a reunion i think if 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 this we wouldn't have the album we have right now and we probably wouldn't have this renaissance right now without matt skiba because i don't think that this would have happened this way even with the cancer and a plane crash i do think it would have been something but it wouldn't have been what we've got right now, I don't think. What well, do you think about that, Rob? Yeah, well, think about it. So with Skiba, Blink is still like a headlining act. like And, and not just a headlining punk act. I mean, like a headlining act with Skiba. Like, it's not yes. like it's not like all the, it's not like they're like Motley Crue, John Karabi, and suddenly they're at these little dingy clubs. You know what I mean? Like, and, right. and, and, and take about the festival, there's a lot of people that were 21, 22 years old that were definitely like 14 or 15 when Bored to Death came out. And so that was their onboarding to Blink-182. And it had to be right. good enough, at least for them, to get into the old stuff, to appreciate that now. And and also, and that's why I meant about them being a headliner. Like, that might be a thing. Like, oh, can we get back to get together? But, like, at least they, they were still, like, a thing. Like, it's not like you have to do this whole thing where you have to reset up everything and build all that. That's what I was kind of getting All that was able to they remain were still a thing. because they of, had to because of Matt. Them out. And and honestly, like I think I think if we if COVID never hits, I don't think Tom ever comes back. I think that that stopped everything enough, along with the cancer, along with it, just everything kind of stopped, along with uh, Matt living in a different place than the rest of the guys, so literally being physically apart. I think the world stopping actually is kind of what facilitated that, or else we would just still be on the the trio one eighty two thing. I think. Let Let me be real clear. I I'm not even like really hating on Blink. I I'm a huge Alkaline Trio dork, so like. There is a certain amount of like, ooh, that I have in it, right? But like, do I like have some kind of hatred for them? Like Tom DeLong, is he some kind of villain? <laughs> like, no, dude. But I absolutely hate it when people refuse to acknowledge truth. It drives me nuts. I hate it because it's right in front of you and you just refuse to accept it. It's simple. They did something that was kind of shitty to a guy. And that's that. Why do you think Matt Skiba put out that song that day? That was calculated. Whether he wants to say it publicly or not, like we're not stupid people. He did the things that he did. He's got a new album coming out. Come on, man. Like, and I'm not saying that he's out there being like, oh, I'm going to fuck those guys up. But you're not hearing him talk about them. They're not talking about Alkaline Trio. They're not out there touring together like they should be doing. Yes. If this was, if this was a, if this was a, positive thing that nobody did any wrong what would have happened was they would have brought matt skiba on stage and been like and we want to thank matt skiba thank you for watching alkaline trio we're up next that's what would have happened 
But no, there's zero mention of it. And then this letter comes out online that it was just super coincidentally written out. Like, come on, dude. Like, are we that gullible? I guess people are. I guess people are that willing to just be like, nope, 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 nope. No, my favorite band does no wrong. Like Tom, all right. Tom, Tom admitted it. Tom said he saw like what the reaction was. So it's not, it's not the letter. The letter is kind of the superficial thing. You know, Tom well, yeah. saw the, Tom saw the reaction. It was like, Oh shit, let me call Matt. And that's actually what has like Tom admitted. Like we kind of, it kind of, we kind of like just forgot about it as, as it was going. So it's, it's not even like a secret thing. Like they said, like, that's what happened. Yeah, but Every time I bring it up, people get pissed at me and tell me like, no, he put a letter out publicly for him. That's because he loves him, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. He was guilted into doing that. Well, and, and the whole in, in oh, that shit, situation, call Matt is not a good thing, dude. That's I terrible don't know, that it was, I, oh, shit, I don't know why Matt. it was Tom's responsibility to make the phone call either because like Tom, in essence, is not involved. Oh, right. It's, let's it's let's other, be clear. I never said t- Tom. It's the, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you, and that's like, I, what, see, I don't know. I don't make a judgment call on like whether or not it's really tense or not. I just don't know why it was Tom had to be the guy to call because he's actually not involved directly. No, it, it's the I other two guys that it, are. Yeah, I never said it was Tom's responsibility. I don't think I've ever said that anywhere. And if I did, my apologies. But no, I'm I don't not. Think I'm I've saying Tom is the one that actually took the action. And I, what I've never understood is why, why, why was it his? Well, probably because he's the one that didn't have to. So it was a lot easier for him. Let's just be honest. We're like, I'm humans. not the one that screwed up, basically. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah. So we're, I'm not, yeah. we're all humans. Like, I've done things that I've had to, like, suck it up and go talk to some people. It was not easy. Mm-hmm. So it was probably easier for him to do it than the other guys. And, it, like, this is, again, why I don't think they're touring. I think if it was up to Tom, they might actually be touring. But I think there's some bad blood there with Mark, Travis, and Matt. Because Matt basically was that glue for, what, five years or something like that? Mm-hmm. Like, 2015 like, to, like, last year, yeah. So, like, nothing? Nothing? There's no, like, We Love Alkaline Trio song on this new freaking album? Nothing? It's a little bit crazy to me, bro. Am I being a little extra with it? Yes, of course I am. <laughs> but, it, it, but it does, like, I would be so proud of them, dude. Like, so proud of some people that are from our community and our scene. That, no, dude, look, we did it the right way, guys. This is some shit that regular-ass pop stars would do to each other. That's what bothers me, is that this is what some people in the regular music industry would do to each other. But no, we're we're from a different community. We're of a different ilk. We have different DNA, man. So, yeah, I bet it did hurt Matt's feelings. Like, to just wake up. Dude, I mean, he said it publicly. He found out he was not in the band on Twitter. That's crazy to me, bro. Like to wake up one day being like, yeah, I'm in Blink-182 and then to look at your phone and be like, oh shit, I'm not in Blink-182 anymore. Bro, I'd be buying four or five new phones. Is that a break in one every time I see that shit? Like, can you imagine the amount of money he got, he just got taken out of his pocket? The amount of just stuff he could go do. But, but I wouldn't, like, what, so the only, the only thing I wonder about that is like for about a year before that, they would ask him if he was in Blink and he would say he didn't know. So my because theory I don't is- think they're talking to him. But I think the band had already, like his time had ended. I think- that's what I'm saying. He didn't know it was going to happen like when it did. And that was yes. the slight. I just think it was like sort of, it was a known thing that it was going to happen. So, so I, I, okay. I think and, they kind of ended that era. And so he's like, he would, he would have come back if they would ask him back, but I think he knew he was done. So, so in, in, in the interest of being fair, I do think there's like a small percentage of maybe he should have reached out and asked, but I do think like you just said, had they asked, he would have kept doing it. I think the majority of that falls on them because it is mostly their band. Like yeah. it, even even at the most Matt Skiba part of that, it's still their right. band. Like they literally so it is, he didn't. It, yeah, it's their responsibility to ask him back. So I mean, how I guess there's a very small sliver of responsibility that he has to shoulder. But like, dude, well, I don't I don't see that he has any responsibility to shoulder. I'm just saying. I well, I, I mean, he could have reached out like, hey, what are we doing? What are we I just doing? don't know that the, that like he was like so wounded by it. Like it was, it was this big shock. No, like, I, don't, I, don't I don't think that think he was that wounded. Was I'm a fan of his, so I'm more wounded than he probably is. Mm-hmm. But I will say, I don't believe for a split second that he's not a little bit sour. Just look Whoa. at the way things are unfolding right now. There's no way that you can tell me that he's not a little bit sour. No, he probably and, is. And, and, then, and then he wrote like the best alkaline trio songs come out in like 10 years. But he might be sad, but like he would not be sharing in this right now though, either. Like part of why this is happening. Do what now? Right? Like all the like the the spoils and riches that Blink is encountering right now would are happening because he's not in the band. Like that, that's also true too. Yes. So like, 
so like yeah. I, I like I don't know if like it's not like he's not looking longingly at something that he could have had that he doesn't have anymore either. Because like, uh, I don't like yeah, that. no, no, financially, yes, down the road in the long term, is he probably better off doing because... headlining tours of Blink? Yes. But I'm saying like right now, Blink is having this moment as like the biggest band in the world, and yes, it's because but, he was but, not in the band. My point though is that they're not mentioning him anywhere. They're not giving him the thanks that they should be giving him, and they're not taking him on tour like they should absolutely be doing. That's my whole point, is that he's getting bit over and fucked because these guys are too cowardly to go, hey, look, we really should have done this different, man. I'm sorry. Why don't we go on tour together, man? You can jump on stage, play a couple of the songs with us. It would be great. And then you guys can get introduced to tens or hundreds of thousands of people that don't know who the fuck Outline Trio is because, believe me, there are just buku number of fans that are blink fans that still don't know who matt skiba is or how relevant that guy is in this whole scene like am i wrong no you're absolutely but that was that, so, that was that was so the that's, thing initially that's People the issue is that the like issue is or whatever the issue what I mean? isn't that his time came to an end the issue is that they were just completely flippant about it they didn't think that they owed him anything and that is incorrect. That's the issue. Again, I would like to reiterate, I love Blink-182. They are still my second favorite pop punk band. I would still go see them if their prices were reasonable. But I mean, there's another thing right there, dude. I just bought tickets to Alkaline Trio, and I could have bought like six tickets to that show or one to the last Blink show. I'm just on principle not going to go see Blink-182 ever again in my life. Uh, I don't know. I love Blink. I'm not hating on the band. I'm just spitting facts and I, I am a little bit salty that they didn't give the guy some kind of love dude like i don't get it man like okay here here's a question for you if if one day one of my close friends who i've asked to start a podcast with before i knew you popped up and was like hey man i want to do a podcast with you and i was like all right cool then i start doing one with him right you and i still do our thing and then one day you're like, you know what, dude? I've got a lot going on with school stuff right now. I think I'm gonna put a pause to the, to the, to the, my channel. I'm just gonna focus on my career right now. Uh, you might want to just like let that thing absolve this one. Do I not owe you some kind of thank you? Do I not owe you some special edition podcasts when you want to do one? Do I not owe you the, uh, hey, you're you want to start your channel get going again? All right, dude. Weekly podcast again. Like, do I not owe you that? Yeah, I I'm had not, a channel before I mean, we met. I'm not. I was. I'm not, I had. A, no, I'm I had not, like audience. defending that. I would just like. I'm just saying, like that's a good. That's a good like example. Like I would absolutely do that for you. Like it's it's crazy that somebody could have somebody do something so important for them, and I don't ever hear it talked about. They don't mention it ever. Like they mention it a little bit at the beginning that oh we're glad he's here, but in hindsight I don't hear like damn, boy are we lucky we had that guy around. And I am being a little extra about it because it's a podcast. We're supposed to be like, do I think about this all day? No, I don't fucking give a shit. Like, <laughs> that's the messed up part. You're, you're sitting like, in the room by yourself. Just freaking dude, Mark I'm gonna get. I'm gonna, take a, I'm gonna get my timer on my phone, and I'm gonna take a picture of me sitting like this, <laughs> just, just angry. At me. And I'm, those damn Blink One Eighty Two guys. No, like in reality, I'm glad that they're doing what they're doing. I'm sincerely happy with what Blink's doing. I'm glad that they're all healthy happy doing the things they're doing i'm glad uh tom's back in the band i, I like tom in the band um yeah man I'm, I'm not i'm not upset that they're back together I, I just i really just am baffled by it is what it really is i think it's because i like them so much that i expected something out of them and it didn't mm -hmm. come and i was like well shit i guess i didn't really know these guys at all like i really thought that i kind of knew a little bit about these dudes apparently not like it's just weird to me so yeah, and I insist on, you know, when you see something that's right in front of you, you have to acknowledge it. These fucking kids, man. Like, <laughs> fucking... Mass Cable was never in the band. Dude, yo, what if I woke up tomorrow and that was real? That he was ever actually in the band? A Mandela effect thing? I, like, dreamt it, and I'm just complaining about all this shit. <laughs> like, and you're, like, telling me, I'm like, no, Skiba's been in Alkaline True all these years. What are you talking about <laughs> I'm like, no, dude, he was in Blink for like fucking six years, bro. They did two albums together. I go look at the liner notes and it says Tom DeLong. Yeah. I'm like, huh? Like, <laughs> dude, that, that would be amazing. Um, 
Yeah, can man, we Blink fix other sins of, of humanity other than just Skiba being in Blink? I think there's other things we can do if we have that kind of No, power. that's the most important thing in this entire... <laughs> that's the most important subject in this whole entire Well, based on the last 10 minutes of the podcast, yes, it was the most important thing ever. Bro, it really bothers me, man. <laughs> yeah, it you, really bothers me. You I know feel what like saying? that dude. I feel like that dude has gotten fucking screwed over mentally, like, real bad. You know what it is, though? Think about why, why would that bother me so much? I don't know. You've, you've laid it I've out. had similar like, things happen to me in my life. I'm not going to talk about who it was involving and stuff, uh, at least not on air. But I've had similar things happen to where I was like, not even a thank you, huh? Well, you're welcome for that uh, fill in the blank. I'm not going to tell people what it was, but like, cool, you can have all this success and I'll just stand back here and, you know, you know that I had something to do with that. But thanks, because all I really wanted was like a, like a high five and acknowledgement. <laughs> Or like maybe like a yo, here's your little helping hand when you're down on the fucking ground trying to get up. Like it never came. And so like when I see that kind of stuff, it really does bother me because we're supposed to be friends, aren't we? Like aren't they supposed to be friends? Like geez, Louise, man, you would think that they would care more about their buddies than that. But and uh, although I'm not living that life, so I don't know. Maybe life's just moving too fast. I wonder who thought about this more, you or Matt Skiba? Me for sure. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you. for sure. For sure. Matt Skiba <laughs> doesn't get. He's he's still in alkaline tree. I make a fucking podcast. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I got to have something that I'm passionate about to make the kids mad enough to fucking hate watch my videos. I, I just didn't think this was the thing specifically. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> it just really irritates me, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't say. Motherfucker. <laughs> uh, next week, we're going to do our top five Green Day vid uh, videos. Excuse me. Green Day albums. Yes. So okay. get ready for that, man. Get ready for me to talk about Alkaline Trio and Blink-182 a little bit more. And the top <laughs> five Green Day <laughs> Uh, albums. You're, you're gonna spend this week going through the lyrics on the Blink album and, and find uh, hints of slights at Skiba. Oh man, no, I would. I don't care that much. Well, I, the, you know the funny thing is, is that I genuinely don't think about this unless we're talking about it. When it comes up, it, that's Clearly. why I talk about it so much because I get all fired up again. You're, because you're when I'm not having dreams, Skiba, 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 Skiba. <laughs> Okay, top the long. Okay, like, but uh, yeah, dude, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think about this often. And it's funny that it makes me so angry. Um, it's stupid, man. I, I if, if if anybody's watching this for even a minute hasn't figured it out yet, I have black and I have white. I do not have a gray area. It's no. either one or one hundred. I'm either like, or I'm ranting and raving about something. Like I don't have. Ask my family; they can tell. This, you. this have... episode, particular that that neutral uh, gear, just got ripped out of your brain for this episode, dude. Like, <laughs> love it. Great. <laughs> well, I was like in the middle of talking about Blink on my list, and I'm like, man, they're so awesome, dude. And then the moment I said, but I listen to Alkaline Trio more, I was like, and everybody should like, <laughs> just really fucking. I'm gonna protect my Matt Ski, but damn it, oh, that's like awesome. My mother would, my god. You know, I, <laughs> uh, I hate myself sometimes. <laughs> I just ruin shit sometimes, dude. <laughs> uh, there's, nothing, not, there's nothing wrong with what you said. It just it was such a sneaky point, <laughs> dude. I, it makes me so angry, bro. <laughs> and it's, okay, so I know this as a dad. It's like when you're getting mad at your kids and you're mad at one thing and you just start getting more and more mad and then you <laughs> think of it more as you're telling them off about one. That's exactly what you did. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. If I wasn't a dad, there's no way that would have bothered me so much. No, yeah, exactly. Because like, then you it's just, then you then you think about the principal as you do as a father when you're talking about something and then you're mad about it again. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, dude, exactly just for the fact you. that he did something for them, they should have. And then it just makes me more and more angry. I got but that like, for you last week. There was a the reason why I told you not to do it. Yes, that's that's exactly. Right. Yo, shout out to Blink One Eight Two, man. I'm I happy for them, dude. They're killing it right now. I, I I am genuinely like stoked that they're back in like the news because it gives me something to talk about. Gives you something to talk about. Gives everybody music to listen to. Um, it gives me something to be angry about a little bit. Whatever, dude. It, it creates talking points and content. Um, it is pretty amazing, we, we dude. I'm happy for them. Space, I think a lot of in a lot of ways. I feel like. Do what? Like, like I feel like just my for my basically dormant YouTube channel, like numbers are up this week. So I think like the blink, there's been like a blink infusion that's kind yeah. of that's risen all ships. I think I've noticed that on Instagram too of just other when we were young did it a little bit, but specifically blink having the album, uh, having yeah. the, like all of that. And then Green Day's like just kind of right there hanging out, like like hold hold on. As soon as Blink does that, we're gonna actually show them how it's done. And that like, right. it is dude, right now too. look, man, I don't want to be an asshole, but Green Day is 
they're the kings of it, dude. I still mm. consider them more of just a punk band, though. So I don't. Mm. It's a weird thing. I still think Blink, since the general public considers Green Day a pop punk band, I'd have to say that they're probably the biggest. But I don't really think of them that way. So yeah. we talked about that. Um, they're the biggest punk band of all time. I think that's actually the way to talk. Yeah, about it. it's yeah. it's an interesting topic to talk about, though. It's because it can go. It could get very animated and and yeah, and to the point that and we'll and we'll kind of end on this. The point that they are pop. It's more because they're they're like a pop rock punk band is actually a better way to sort of describe yeah. them. Um, and so that's like, they were always like, before they ever got big, they were, <clears throat> they were kind of not accepted in Gilman because they were too poppy for the Gilman street, but it wasn't really that right. The way like, and I said, so, so like, like Blink and these guys were doing almost like in excess or like the Backstreet Boys. That was like the pop music they're doing where Green Day is more traditional to like the Beatles and to like almost like classic yeah. rock is, is sort well, of, well, you can even the hear the Beatles they're bringing in. Yeah. You can hear the Beatles in their new song, even. I mean, they're, well, that's they're, what I, yeah. that's I told someone. I was like, "Hey, it's like the Beatles. They didn't suck." That's what I told someone. About Green Day. I mean, I, I don't like. The and Beatles I respect either, the dude. Beatles because, like, a lot of punk rock is basically like that basic concept of rock and roll. And like Fat Mike says, "You want to learn how to write songs? Listen to like the Beatles." But like, yeah, all you guys can. And then I'll listen to all the stuff that everyone who listened to the Beatles wrote. Yeah, thank can, you. Yeah, like, there's a lot too. of it. that's very good. I'm just, I'm just not a Beatles head. It's just one of those things. Man, after all my grumping and griping, I still, dude, I'm, I'm like. Yeah, that's the ticket I'll pay a lot of money for. If okay. it's if it's Blink and Alkaline on tour, if that ever happens, I'll be dude. I'll be the first person to like congratulate them and like I would if be that, at that show. If that, that ever happens, awesome. we have like we, you and I are gonna have like a booth have to be set up outside of like the show doing a live podcast. It would be that type. If of that happens, I'll I'll fly to Albuquerque and go to that show too. They, they'd be sure. more likely to be closer to you than me if that ever happened. <laughs> True, you can fly down here to Texas. Yeah, and uh, uh, but yeah, man, I I, I do hope that happens. Uh, my 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 aggravation, animation, and <laughs> lively behavior is mostly for your entertainment. Yeah. When this hits, when I hit stop here in a second, I'm gonna go watch Silver Bullet and not think about this shit at all. So, uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us for this very long episode. I had a lot of fun. I had a feeling this would be a long one. Rob had a lot to say. I knew he was gonna have a lot to say. I can't shut up. It's just not really. I don't know how, but um, hella fun, man. Hella fun. Expect some clips, I guess. And uh, yeah, man, next week, Green Day. I got some guests I'm working on, but I guess holidays are kind of starting to happen and people aren't as receptive right now. So maybe a lull in content for uh, special guests, but it's okay because we'll be here every week doing the Punk Rock Review podcast. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned, folks. Peace. Peace.